If you've ever practiced magazine reloads and you dropped a magazine on your toe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If the pain was unimaginable, tell the story down in the comments. The comment section is absolutely out of control. I will do nothing to control you guys. Do yourselves. I will simply be the disappointed dad from afar, just like your childhood. <laughs> you guys, if you're looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month. You get in there, super cheap prices. Definitely check it out. Of course, we have Vertex and we have LAX ammunition for both our plaid, pants, all that good stuff. Of course, our ammunition needs. Go check them out. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, M9 Pistols. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a pretty cool pistol. Thank you, ATF, with your arbitrary rules. We have the SIG. MPXK. This is the shortened model. So I've been getting a lot of requests to do a review on this, so I thought we'd finally do one. It's been a long time in coming, but these reviews don't come easily. They take a lot of time. So um, before we kind of launch into it, what is my relationship with SIG? I always like to do a disclosure if you're not familiar. As far as SIG is concerned, I asked them if I could do a review on the MPX and a couple other firearms that we talked about when I, was, when I did the review on the MCX. And um, yeah, basically they, they are sending me firearms and optics to do reviews on, uh, but no ammunition. So it's a little less than what I typically uh, do with companies. Uh, the ammunition was done by me. No one helped me with jack shit when it comes to that. So that is the relationship there. Um, no money exchanges or anything like that when it comes to these reviews. <clears throat> so let's get into it. So the MPX is pretty interesting. The MPX is a pistol caliber carbine. Uh, specifically, it is a short stroke gas operated and it fires from a closed rotating bolt. Um, that is very interesting and something that you do not see a whole lot in the pistol caliber carbine market. Um, the MPX definitely falls into a different category versus a lot of the other um, you know, PCC slash SMGs that we've talked about. This is a professional firearm. It's made for a professional end user to be used in austere and non-permissive environments, et cetera, et cetera. And it definitely um, lives up to that potential. But before we kind of go into the end there, let's talk about, let's go tip to butt like we always do, like my Navy guys like. And we're gonna talk about what makes this firearm what it is. And we're gonna talk about what I like, what I don't like about it, and uh, kind of go from there. So the flash hider is both effective because it reduces flash and it's also frustrating. And here's the frustrating thing about it, is with pistol caliber carbines, SMGs, I like to be able to uh, easily mount a suppressors of my choice. And I'm sure SIG made this so they could do their whole suppressor lineup and all that kind of stuff, but uh, they use a really interesting thread pitch. So once you do remove the uh, muzzle device, you have to get some type of adapter. So it's not that big of a deal, it's just frustrating um, if you have you know, a standard thread if you have a standard you know, pistol caliber suppressor and the thread pitch doesn't match up, so you have to buy some type of adapter. Me personally, I have a tri-leg coming for this so I can uh, just easily mount any of my tri-leg type suppressors. I don't think there's a whole lot of flash anyhow with nine millimeter, but in any case, the muzzle device is effective, although I don't know if it's absolutely necessary and I wish I could have gotten something a little bit different, but I do understand where they're coming from so you don't put some type of uh, you know, 223 caliber uh, muzzle device on there and, put a nine millimeter hole through that bitch. So that is good with them when it comes to that. The barrel, the barrel is phenomenal on the SIG MPX. So specifically, it is a 4.5 inch barrel that is cold hammer forged. Um, that's about as good as you can get. And what's even better is that it's free floated, but beyond that, I've been incredibly impressed with the accuracy. The accuracy out of the MPX is to date the best I've seen short of the GAP and the MP5. It's either on par, uh, it's a little bit better than the MP5. I've seen people doing groups of about four to five inches at about 100 yards with these particular firearms. And that's pretty incredible with good ammo. So the maximum effective range, like we've talked about before, my nine millimeter, you're looking at about 200 meters, but that's really, pushing it about 100 to 120 yards is about where you kind of see the kind of the end zone of the nine millimeter but well it's kind of like that that uh, effective range of the uh, of the m4 it can do 600 but you're really pushing it at that point so within its effective envelope of 
being able to actually put things into the ground, uh, it is more than capable and more than accurate. I definitely want to spend more time testing out the accuracy of the MPX, but again, phenomenal from what I've seen. <clears throat> handguard. So the handguard is uh, has M-lock on the two sides right here and on the bottom. We have a small section of the handguard that is Picatinny at the very top. Um, but when it comes to the handguard, uh, there's a lot of space right there around the barrel. And I understand you need to let barrels cool. But 9mm isn't in, uh, you know, a round that heats up guns uh, too quickly. So I wish they would have kind of shrunk down the handguard just a little bit. Made for something a little bit smaller. It's perfectly small right now. And again, maybe it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. But that's something I wish they would have done. Um, all these kind of like accentuating cuts could have kind of been reduced or uh, M-lock could have been put in there had they shrunk it down a little bit more. Maybe something more akin to a BCM type handguard um, kind of aesthetic. And I'm sure what it can, comes down to is they have some type of suppressor that fits under like a larger version of this uh, or something along those lines. But in any case, that's kind of my pet peeve with the Sega MPX. And again, I am nitpicking with this gun and I'm treating it way more harshly than I would other guns because... Uh, compared to anything else that will likely be used in the line of duty. So that is the handguard. The M-Lock is great. It's very thick. It's going to hold what you need there. Besides that, the handguard is effective, although I'm sure people will be coming out with many um, better aftermarket options in the very near future because it is a fairly modular weapon and easy to pop that off. Moving back from there, we do have the short stroke gas piston system. Um, I want to talk about it right now, but it is absolutely incredible. Uh, to date, I've mostly dealt with... Um, pistol caliber carbines and SMGs that are either roller delayed like the MP5 or the newer Strybog or direct blowback uh, like the UMP and pretty much every other uh, AR 9mm or any other gun out there. The MPX definitely stands apart with a short stroke gas uh, operated weapon and that is actually made for, again to date, lots of firsts here, um, the most, the softest shooting pistol caliber carbine that I fired uh, right alongside the MP5, perhaps a little bit uh, more gentle than the MP5 even, and that's pretty incredible. The first time I fired it, I thought I actually had a misfire, and I don't often get it wrong when it comes to PCCs about the type of recoil I think I'm gonna see. So, just phenomenal. They did a wonderful job on gassing the weapon, ensuring both reliability and softness of shooting. Um, I haven't had the chance to fire one of these in full auto, I will hopefully be heading over up to SIG at some point in the very near future to test out a couple other things. And I will definitely do a further on um, review on a full, on a automatic model. I wish we could have automatic models, but the GTF is on us. Okay, moving from there, we do have a full length Picatinny rail, uh, except for the very end two sections right here, that is continuous with the receiver. Um, incredibly robust, very sturdy. If you want to mount any type of material, if you want to mount any type of IR devices, uh, lights, lasers, whatever, you're not going to lose zero on IR devices or optics. Speaking of optics, we do have a SIG optic on this. Um, just testing it out currently. I'm not endorsing or anything like that. Just understand I test a lot of things, and that is what's going on with this optic right here. All right, moving down to the magazine well. The magazine well is awesome. Uh, compared to the, uh, like, JP, this is, like, a competition size fuck huge. It is huge. It makes for very easy smooth insertions. I know for my army guys out there kind of lining things up and getting things in the holes a little hard as I screwed it up right there. So <laughs> it is very easy to do reloads and beyond that I want to take a moment to talk about the magazines. This is something that is often neglected and I think in a lot of uh, topics when it comes to the gun but especially when developing a new firearm like the MPX was developed I think 2013 released in 2015. Um, a lot of the reliability and durability of the weapon comes from the magazine crappy magazine, gun's not going to run. Uh, we know that from the early uh, problems of the M16, among other issues. But if you take a look at it, um, let's talk about a couple things that are good. First off, uh, they use a really good polymer, sturdy base plate. These don't pop off when you drop them on concrete. That's good. We have rib for your pleasure right here, easy to grasp them in uh, terrible wet conditions like up here in the Pacific Northwest. And then the best part is full featured all around. We have metal reinforced um, lips right there which is precisely what you want. It's a incredibly strong, robust design. Beyond that, the locking tab for locking into the magazine well is also reinforced with steel. Um, the other really good magazine in the PCC community right now is the CZ, but without a doubt, I believe that the SIG MPX magazine is actually a superior magazine design um, just by virtue of everything they have going on here. The problem with the magazines on the SIG MPX, 
Sting is becoming HK-like. Everything is getting very expensive, and that is especially true of the magazines. The 30-round magazines are topping out about 50, 55, 60 bucks. Compare that to like a CZ mag or the uh, PSA mags that they make for the CZs, you're talking like 15, 20 bucks at most. So I am not happy with the cost of the magazines. I really wish they could figure out a way to bring those down. I do understand that um, you know QC and good materials and robustness does cost something, but you know with AR15 mags costing around you know, 15, 12 dollars. I feel like they should be able to bring these down at some point in the future. Perhaps that will happen. My gripe with the MPX comes down to the magazine cost. Really cool feature on the MPX is ambient mag controls and that they're actually usable uh, for a variety of situations. We have magazine release right side, magazine release left side. We also have bolt release left side that is traditional like an AR-15. And we also have a bolt release on the right hand side. So what's cool is there's two different types of reloads that you can do. So we can do the standard AR-15, drop the mag, mag in, drop the bolt, right? Pretty standard. Uh, one that I've been working with and that my good buddy BB helped me with is that as soon as I release a mag, bring my finger up to that bolt release up there. So, you know, mags release, and then you release it with that trigger finger. Uh, I found that from that release reaching up, my trigger finger comes back on the target. I'm actually a little bit faster releasing it with that right-handed bolt release than I am with the uh, left-handed bolt release, like a traditional AR type system. And that is pretty cool. I like it, small little innovations like that. A lot of companies have tried doing the right-handed release, but they've done something really weird. This reaches back, is easily hit by your trigger finger. So for my Andy guys out there, this is perfectly doable. Also, my hands are kind of like medium-sized man hands, and all the controls are directly in the right place. I am a perfectly average male, I feel like. So right here, we have our dust cover. So again, I, and I hate to do it, but compared to a lot of ARs and nine millimeter, they typically take like an actual 5.56 dust cover and they simply cut it and you have a nice little sharp edge. So it's nice, I know it's what it, it's what, sh what it should be, but it's nice to have a dust cover that's actually cut to the size of the ejection port. So you can see right here in the upper, you have these two grooves. So what those are for is that's for a retractable stock that collapses into the gun. It's actually one of my favorite stocks from them. I'll likely be getting it in the very near future as I do follow on videos on the MPX and additional torture testing. Up to this point, it should be noted that we have 3,000 rounds on it. Um, no issues so far. We'll talk about that more though. Okay, from there, we have standard AR-15 type selector switches. I think that AR ergonomics are some of the best out there. Um, when it comes to the MPX, they use uh, the AR ergonomics and that works perfectly fine. I think that they are unmatched so far with other weapon designs out there. Anyhow, we have ambi safety right here. We have it shorter on the right hand side, which is good so it doesn't brush in your hand too much. On the left hand side, it's the standard length for a AR-15. The grip, of course, is changeable to any AR type grip. Um, SIG's grip is actually pretty good. I really enjoy the grip angle on it. I have no complaints when it comes to that. Kind of lines up very nicely, even on the K model with a really short length of pull. All right, we've ignored it long enough. We, of course, have the trigger. So the trigger for the MPX is from Timney. Timney makes some phenomenal triggers, and that is no different when it comes to the MPX. Now, recently I did a video on the AKV 9mm from PSA, and it had an incredibly light trigger, um, a trigger that I would not trust for duty usage. Uh, the Timney is a little bit heavier, but still crisp enough and light enough to be quick on, but again, heavy enough to... Uh, be acceptable in my mind for duty usage. So let's go ahead and let's try it out together. This is a single stage trigger, it should be pretty good. All right, so we're gonna play a little Unchained Melody. Put your finger right over mine. Okay, we have zero take up. Here, put in pressure. We have a solid three pound pull, maybe a little bit less. Let's feel the reset. It comes forward about one millimeter, three pound pull, and that feels wonderful. Um, that is a really good trigger. <laughs> that's a really good trigger right there. And that's especially, that's precisely what you want from a military type trigger. Very good. So again, you can run this thing incredibly fast just due to the ease of the trigger and how nice it is. And a trigger definitely contributes to a better handling, better firing weapon. So good on SIG on putting a good trigger in there. Moving from there, we have the charging handle. Charging handle is ambidextrous as well. 
I do recommend upgrading to the Radian. It's a little hard to grab onto at times, so I do prefer the Radian over this one, but I wanted to complete this review with a mostly stock weapon from SIG just to give them a good uh, college try. But yeah, go with the Radian on that. The back, like many other SIG weapons, and perhaps one of the greatest innovations from SIG has been the 1913 uh, stock adapters. Just awesome. It's just a length of Picatinny, and then their stocks just latch onto it and allows you to, uh, to lower or raise the stock to help with um, height of the optic or whatever you need to do. Just great. I really have enjoyed what they've done with these stocks. Now, that being said, the brace that we have on here, just their little pistol brace that they come with, that it comes with, is a real piece of crap. I'm not a fan of that. Um, it works, it's effective, but there's so many better things out there. This is what it comes with. When you get this, I personally put a little, uh, actually, I don't know if I can say that because YouTube might get mad at me. Oh, screw it. I put a little tape on there and shim that bitch, that way it didn't spin around so much and that worked pretty well. There are other things you can do like adding in washers and stuff so it doesn't spin for firing with it wrapped on your hand, ATF. But in any case, you're gonna wanna do something because this brace sucks. I'm probably gonna SBR this at some point, uh, do an e-form on that, they, they take a couple weeks right now and put an actual stock on it. Because I do like this gun quite a bit. <laughs> Here we are hitting the end. Um, without a doubt, it, when it comes to conclusions, the MPX is a professional weapon. Uh, it's designed for professional end users, and they did an incredibly good job of it. As much as I don't like SIG at certain times um, for certain missteps that they've taken, I think that the M MPX is a really good design. It is incredibly soft shooting, softer than the MP5 by just a teeny bit, and that's incredible. But beyond that, what makes it even better is compared to the MP5, it has a times 10,000 better trigger. Just in every way, shape, or form, I believe that it eclipses the MP5. I do believe that this is a superior weapon, and I don't say that about a lot of things, but I think that SIG really got it right with the MPX. With further aftermarket coming in here in the future, I think that'll be a much more viable design with a better handguard and cheaper magazines especially, but as it stands, it is an awesome firearm. You can't go wrong with it, and I would definitely recommend it. Now, that being said, I've done 3,000 rounds on the MPX, but I went ahead and I hit up a couple competition shooters to ask them for their opinions of the MPX, because these guys burn stuff down. They fire a ton of rounds. So we're talking 50, 60, hundreds of thousands of rounds per year uh, in their competition careers. So I hit up two of them. I hit up, uh, let's see, make sure I don't get them wrong. I hit up Zach Smith shooting and Max Mundy. Um, both of them incredible shooters, much better than mine than me. So I can't think of them enough for taking the time to talk with me about the MPX. But in any case, Depending on the pistol powder you use, according to them, you can run into some issues on the piston. So a lot of guys who are shooting the MPX quite a bit in the competition circle are using uh, their own loadings. Specifically, they are using tight group powder. However, it does foul up your weapons more quickly. And especially on the bolt of the MPX, it's somewhat susceptible to this. So at around the four to five K mark, using that type of powder, you're gonna begin to see some odd malfunctions as the piston can no longer fully seat. So their typical recommendations are, is if you're using that tight group powder or some type of competition loading with a dirtier powder, that you clean the piston on the MPX about every four to five K rounds. So realize that cleaning the piston is a little bit involved and uh, you will likely lose your zero, so you'll have to re-zero it. But if you're using those types of powder, that's something to be aware of. Now with other buddies who have been using duty loads on the MPX, they haven't been seeing those issues. So I think it might be related to simply the powder type used. Uh, the M16 had a similar problem in the early days when they're using when they switched powder types. So understand and kind of be a little bit cognizant of what type of powder types you're using at the MPX for that reason. If you're worried about it, just clean out the piston. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Beyond that, general uh, maintenance that they recommend is about every 1K round. Of course, giving the bolt a wipe down, using a Q-tip to both clean and oil the barrel extension. Pretty normal stuff. At about the 10K mark, you should be replacing your extractor and that's pretty on par with most weapons out there. But again, we wanna thank them for taking the time to impart some knowledge to us and give us a little bit more insider information on really high round counts on the MPX. In any case, I think that this is a phenomenal firearm. Definitely get out there, try one out. If it's within your budget and they are a little bit expensive, they're coming out around 1800, which is really unfortunate. That's the only thing that I can say about this is expensive, yes, but compared to like a well-built MP5, like one from H&K, or one from uh, Zenith or something like that, or, or Dakota Tactical, it does come in at less money. Of course, the magazines are more expensive, so maybe it equals out in the end. I think that ultimately this was a phenomenal firearm. Get out there, shoot with it. But as is 
our normal thing, as cool as this looks, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna look bad at this and you're not gonna look cool with it. And looking cool is all that matters. Get training. Tons of great guys out there. We have uh, Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Heavy Strategic, no relation to me. Uh, Esoteric, Darcy. Uh, we of course have Core Vision guys, they're awesome. Pat McNamara, so many guys out there. Tony Cotton, so many guys out there, I can't even name them all. But get training from good guys and get that knowledge because yeah, the gun matters, the weapon matters, but you are the ultimate weapon. So make sure that you keep uh, yourself both healthy and well-trained so that you can use this stuff and implement it uh, when necessary. And as is normal, guys, I've got nothing else for you. All right, guys, ladies, everybody. Final thing for you today. A um, little bit of knowledge usually. We're going to do a quote today because it's something that I really like and embodies a lot of what I believe. So I learned this quote from my good buddy who I went through team with uh, back in the day when we suffered in the Medina dorms forever. And uh, so I can't thank him enough, but uh, we're going to go ahead and read this quote together. So the quote is from Viktor Frankl. And the quote goes, man does not simply exist, but always decides what his existence will be, what he will become the next moment. By the same token, every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. Take a little time, think about that. It's something that rattles around in my head quite a bit. Love that quote. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You know, if you've gotten this far, that my biggest supporters are Patreon. You guys directly support the channel through cameras, lights, camera cards, everything, hard drives I just had to fail, I had to buy two more. You've directly made this channel better because of your support. I can't thank you guys enough. A um, dollar, five dollars, anything helps. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Love you guys. I've got nothing else for you.